This is Pat with Pat's Two Cents with God's Church of Love meeting every Saturday and Tuesday. Details below in the description box if you're interested in joining us. Isaiah 43, starting at verse 1. But now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Since thou was precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth even every one that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Bring forth the blind that have eyes and the deaf that have ears. Let all the nations be gathered together and let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this and show us former things? Let them bring forth their witnesses that they may be justified or let them hear and say it is true. Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant, whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Let me read that again. That ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God form, neither shall there be after me. I, even I am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. I have declared and have saved and I have showed when there was no strange God among you. Therefore, ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, that I am God. Yea, before the day was, I am he and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work and who shall let it? Thus saith the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sake, I have sent to Babylon and I brought down all their nobles and the Chaldeans whose cry is in the ship. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the creator of Israel, your king. Thus saith the Lord, which maketh a way in the sea and a path in mighty waters, which bringeth forth the chariot and horse, the army and the power. They shall lay down together. They shall not rise. They are extinct. They are quenched as tow. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Shall it not spring forth? Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Now, we're stopping there. That was verse 19, where we ended. This is what I have to say about that. Number one, we must, the key is to all of this, is you must believe and know and understand who God is in the big picture. You will be surprised, even born-again Christians don't really have a clue or that much of a clue as to how powerful their God really is. Now, <clears throat> I don't care what kind of devices the enemy pulls up in your life. I don't care how many lies the government brings out. I don't care about the schemes, the mark of the beast, about the uh, the new world order, the one world government, the one world religion, all the crazy laws that are squeezing God out. 
You serve a risen Savior. You serve a God who is alive, not dead. God has the authority. Now he has allowed things to happen on this earth because he gave man the freedom of choice. And unfortunately, they lean toward the worst when they make their choices. But that doesn't have to be every one of us. We have to lean on God no matter what. We have to depend on God. When our bodies rise up against us, when people rise up against us, when we end up with foes and opponents on our job, when our family members come against us, we must depend on God. When our own fears rise up against us, we must depend on God. Your fears are nothing but a smoke screen. And you have to remember, Satan is an accuser of the brethren. And he will have people rising up against you and me based on lies. Now, we know that things are going rough right now in, the, in this day and age. We know that things are going crazy. The, the government, they're playing games. The people in leadership are playing games. You've got all these little hidden agendas that we don't even know about, y'all. Lies that we don't even know we've been told. And truths that we have yet to be told because they don't want you to know. Whatever it is, I don't even care. The point is, God can reveal things to his people. We don't have to walk in the dark, live in the dark, trust in the dark. We don't have to dwell in the dark, you guys. We don't have to dwell on the darkness. God is light. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Don't wither in the darkness. Nobody's keeping you in the dark but you, whoever you are. We have to, we have to stay in God's presence. Ask him questions, things you don't understand, things you don't like. Bring it to God. Writing letters to the government and all these senates and all these whatever. Bring it to God. He's the one in control, y'all. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And all the politicians and all the money and all the issues that dwell within. It's God's. Trust in God, not in man. Listen. No matter what's going on, as we were talking about before I got into the word. There are people who are eating themselves into, into the grave. There are people who are having sex like crazy. They're, 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 they're on these sex binges because they don't know what to do with themselves in these quiet moments where the, the, there are so many restrictions and confinements placed on people right now, placed on society. And there are so many people out there with restless spirits. They don't know what to do. So they're drinking, they're getting high. They're doing all kind of craziness. And you have no idea how calm and how beautiful your life can be, even in this bizarre time, if you stay in God's presence. He will keep you in perfect peace, not half-witted peace, not, not imitation peace not temporary peace. God will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stay on him, not Trump, not Obama, not the government, not the new world order, not the beast. Come on now. Where is your mind stayed on? 
What gets your feathers all ruffled up? What gets you all wound up and, and, and fired up? The authority God has over your life and over your circumstances, over your well-being, or all the little human beings that we suspect. What gets you riled up? See, sometimes we have to take our own temperature. We have to be very careful because there are times we don't realize it, but we place more energy and more trust in all the things that could go wrong than the God that can make every wrong right. We'll put more trust in the famine that's approaching. We'll put more trust in the wars and rumors of wars, we'll put more trust in the fears we feel about what's going on. We'll put more trust in the suspicions we have than in God, where all of that doesn't even count in his scheme of things, not if we're his people. We can be in the world but we don't have to be of the world. I can go out in the pouring down rain. It can be lightning out there. The thunder is just shaking up the ground. The water is coming down in torrents. I mean, it's just pouring down, pouring cats and dogs, as they say. But if I put on my Holy Ghost rubbers and I put on my Holy Ghost raincoat and I put on my Holy Ghost hat and raise up my Holy Ghost umbrella and get up under the covering of God, I won't get a drop of rain on me, now will I? Think about that. Think about what you have covering you. Don't think about what might happen, what's going to happen, what ain't going to happen. Listen, we know there's a lot of mess going on out there, and some of it I'm going to address in another video. But I'm not going to dwell on it. It's not going to eat up my time and my thoughts and my emotions and, and my blood pressure and my, my heart function and everything going crazy in my body because I'm getting all caught up in the helter-skelter of what's happening now. No. God is my stay. God is my keeper. God is my provider. God is my peace. God keeps me stable, settled, and calm. God keeps me full of joy, and his presence is fullness of joy. And the joy of the Lord is your strength. So now you could get caught up in Trump all you want. You can get caught up in, in all these different politicians and all that you don't believe and all the lies and all of that. I mean, you could talk about it morning, noon, and night. Number one, you're not going to solve one thing. You can help people be aware of the lies. You can do that for the Lord. Pull the wool from over their eyes instead of pulling it over their, you know, yeah, you can do that. Expose the lies for what they are. But don't get caught up in it. It's not your problem. Think about that. It's not your burden. The battle is the Lord's. So if we keep things in the right perspective and consult with God at every turn, when the wave hits, when the thunder and lightning bolts in the sky, when the earth quakes, mm, mm, mm. you be like, okay, God, you got me. Hold me, Lord. Keep the fear out of my system. Keep my mind from straying down those paths. Keep me from dwelling on all the possibilities of the negatives. And help me keep my mind stayed on you. Because when the dust settles and the crap hits has finished hitting the fan, 
The bottom line is, whose report are you going to believe? Who are you going to be leaning on when you feel a little wobbly on your feet? Hmm? Who are you going to cry out to? What are you going to believe? And if you have trouble believing, tell God and ask him to help thou my unbelief. See, we can sit here and listen to this stuff all we want. And we can dwell on it all we want. See, we have to be careful about it because sometimes we can get so caught up in the things of this world that it could end up being more like juicy gossip. And it'll be more exciting to talk about that than it will be talking about what God is able to do in the midst of it all. We have to be careful, y'all. It's easy to slide into that. Now, I want to share something with you. Years ago, when my husband was committing all that adultery, my first husband, my ex-husband, was committing all that adultery from the second month of our marriage to the eighth year when I divorced him. My family, I never told them a thing. None of my friends knew about it. The only ones that knew were the people who were counseling me in confidence and my best friends, not m my family. Nobody knew. The reason my best friends knew because they saw it themselves. But I didn't run around talking about it. Dip, 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 dip. You know what he did? Dip, dip, dip. You know what he said? Dip, 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 dip. And that night he came home and he did this and he did that. And I saw him and he ran up the phone bill with 900 numbers and he did this and he took the money from here and he spent it on that. And blah, 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 blah. No. Mm -mm. Once I gave that bad boy to God, I left it in God's hand. And that's when I began living again. And my life was enjoyable again. The, I, I was restored to the joy of my salvation. Now, I know a lot of wives whose husband commit adultery and whose husbands have been unfaithful. And that's all you hear. And he, he got that heifer and blah, 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 blah. And next thing you know, that woman was calling the house. I bawled her out. I cussed her out. Never, I mean, they're just on and on and on and on and on. Marriage been, been dead and gone 20 years. They still talking about how horrible it was. They're still talking with anger. Their emotions are tied up in way back when. Because they never put it down. And God said, forget the former things. Don't worry about what happened back then. I'm doing a new thing. Will you not know it? Huh. But too many of us want to dwell. It's sometimes, I'm going to tell you this. Sometimes it's more exciting to stay mad than to get glad. Think about that one. Sometimes it's more it's more exciting to to revel in one's bitterness than think about getting better, getting healed, letting it go. Sometimes it's more exciting to be mad. It's more exciting to dig up all that old stuff so everybody can see how you were mistreated everybody can see how everything went wrong but you're forgetting all the blessings that god has on you now but you keep reaching back back when everything was going wrong and you're so busy looking back as they say you can't see the forest for the trees you're so busy looking back, you can't enjoy where you're at right now, in the here and now, in the today. Be careful about that. God wants us to be convinced of what he's capable of doing in our lives. All that stuff, 
that. All that stuff going on around us now. Nah, I ain't got nothing to do with us. God is Jehovah Jireh, not Trump. God is the one that sets up one and puts down another. So if you want to pray about something going on nowadays, you pray that God blesses his own. And if he's got to bring judgment, that it's not that his own doesn't have to suffer. That's what you pray. That somehow we escape a lot of the badness that's going on. And only those that really deserve, really deserve to be judged. Those that are wreaking havoc in other people's lives. Those that are hurting people. Those that are kidnapping and, and selling people into sex slavery. Those that are, are getting people caught up in drugs. Those that are forcing people into prostitution. Those that are abusing people. Those that are mistreating people. The unjust ones. Let those be the ones to be judged. But not the victim. Anyway, okay. I pray that God helps us lean on him for every single thing. When things look like they're going south, help us not to focus on the south, but help us focus up on him. Look to the hills from whence cometh your help. Lean on him. You need a crutch? Let Jesus be your crutch. Hmm? You need to munch, let the word be your snack. Yeah. You need a little bit of a boost, let prayer restore you to your joyful strength in the Lord. God is everything we need. What did Jesus say? My meat is doing the will of my father. Huh? What did Jesus say to the devil? Yeah. I'm trying to get it right in my head. If you're wondering what's happening, I'm having a senior moment. So y'all pray for me. Not bread alone. Man does not live by bread alone. Thank you. But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's how he dealt with his hunger. How are you dealing with your hunger? How are you dealing with your boredom? How are you dealing with your restlessness? How are you dealing with your fears? How are you dealing with the, uh, with the events of, of today, of the time we're living in? How are you dealing with all of that? I advise you. I admonish you. I beg you. I plead with you. Take it to God. Take it all to God. He's the only answer to all of this mess. Amen. God bless you and be encouraged. Be encouraged. God is not dead. He's very much alive.